Last session, welcome to Figma Workflows. I'm Joachim Nuström, or the chef, as uh, I was named by Per. Uh, I'm going to do a session about like how we are working in Figma uh, from the ground up. So from paper sketch to uh, uh, prototype. And uh, before we start, like this session is going to obey the law of two feet. So if you don't feel that you're learning or contributing, please leave, do it quietly, no hard feelings. And all the things we're doing here today will, well, won't, should it be, I, I spelled it wrong, uh, follow the best practice. So like, follow the path, it's not the destinations. And if I'm starting to like fiddle around with stuff too much, uh, I would like you to shout, move on. So can we also do a little try here? Can you shout, move on? Move on! Once again, come on. Move on! Yeah! That's the feeling. Okay, so what is Figma? It's a cross-platform cross vector graphic editor and prototyping tool, which is like, basically it's, say, Photoshop for web design, and uh, you merge that with Envision. Uh, and my design flow is quite chaotic. I usually do like chaos and I try to clean it up and I try to make chaos again and that's that's the iteration. So what we're going to cover here in like four to five minutes is go from paper sketch to wireframe to design, components, do a prototype. But that's not really how it works. It's more like this map of how the actual work will go. Uh, and uh, we'll take some feedback while we're doing this. So I'm curious, does anyone want to be a product owner? Yes, I'm going to throw up a link to the Figma in the chat uh, for uh, Region Stockholm. The timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll just post it when we get started and you can add some comments and uh, suggestions and I will try to follow it in, uh, if we've got some time. So, buckle up, we're going prototyping. <laughs> so, uh, when I start uh, with, usually like when I do a, a simple like wireframe mock-up uh, to get a fair idea of, of what we're doing, it's like, I do a paper sketch. Uh, and hopefully pick the right, here we go, sketches. So I got a paper sketch, which I usually just crop in the Figma. Or I don't, I have my notebook with me. But since you can't see my notebook, I'll just put it here so you can see it. So what we got here is like a conference site. I thought about like lead talks or something where we like declare the site here up in a splash. We got some talk items where you can sign up. And if you click it, you come to a single page with a header with brief description. Here is a detail, we're going to have a speaker with a title, and in the bottom we'll have a sign up form like where you enter your email, if you click sign up, you come to a confirmation page, it says thank you, and go back to talks. And uh, how we're like starting out is creating a canvas, and uh, I'll just need to enable a little thing called Keycaster, and now you will see what I'm uh, writing, which keys I'm pressing. So if you press A, uh, you will get several different types of canvases. You can do it tab tablet, desktop, etc. But we're going mobile since we're short on time, and mobile's first, right? So we start out with simple blocks. Our intention here is to like show off a prototype for our product owner or something so they can get a fair idea of the flow. And we create simple shapes. By pressing R, you can get a rectangle shape. We're going to do a little header here or a little navigation. And we're going to do our splash. And by keeping option while you're dragging, we create a duplicated rectangle. And we change the color a bit. And we're going to have an image on our little item here. 
and we shouldn't be exact, so I shouldn't do the round. And we'll write some text. Uh, talk title. And make it distinguish it a bit. We can increase the font size by pressing Command Shift dot to increase the font size. And we'll just duplicate that. Talk description. And we need to have that a bit smaller, so we press Command Shift uh, comma to decrease it. Okay. And we need some more text. In order to do that, we can just stand here. Usually, I, I just use a plugin called Lorem Ipsum. You might be familiar to it. And here I can just choose like how many words or sentences. Let's go for 10 words. Okay. And we need our sign up button. So we'll just add this here. And grab this, and you change color of the text with a fill. So just write sign up, and now we got like all components that we need for this. So oh, we should make the splash as well. Put a conference title here as well. Shouldn't fiddle around too much. And we add some sort of logo. This is great. Okay, and now it's time to make components out of this. So we start out with taking our little conference item. We press Command Option K in order to turn it into a component. Then we move it out of the way because we should never have a component inside our design. And we shift drag it in. And we shift drag, drag that one as well. Now we got our items. Okay. We take our splash. We command option K. Move it to the side. And option drag it inside. Now we got an instance. And we should write that there's some kind of menu here. K okay. and command option K. Move, move it to the side and drag a new instance in. Okay. And what we need to do, like you should always name your components. So talk item. And you can just mark it and use command R in order to rename it. So splash. And top bar. Okay, we're going to do a new screen from our old one. Remove the stuff we don't need. Here we got some sort of cover. So we're going to use the old component and use command option B for break to uh, release it from the component. So it's a new instance. Remove the logo and just try to tidy it up. It's a bit, should be a bit smaller. There we are. And we should have a speaker item below. By pressing O, you get access to the circle object. And we just, it's a wireframe, so we don't put much time into it. Speaker name. The application is cool. Speaker title. Both of these are quite big, so we'll decrease the font size. Move it together. Select all. Command option K. Create a component. And move it out of the way. And we'll rename it meanwhile. So speaker. And we'll option drag it back into our design. Let's see here. So we got some uh, further explanation about the talk. So we're going to create a wall of text here. Select text tool by pressing T. And we're pressing 
using our plugin. And it's like you get simple access by using command P. You get a quick fuzzy menu. So we can access it quickly. Get, I don't know, four sentences. That's a general sum. I can duplicate this. There we are. And are you following along? Does it make sense? Any questions so far? No? Okay, great. So we got our, hold up, our form here in the bottom. So we need some sort of text field. So we use our rectangle tool again. Let's do something arbitrary. And we'll put the background color to white. Why we won't use transparent is because, well, it's hard to grab it later on. And we'll add a stroke. Then we got some sort of form field. And we got some sort of button here earlier on. I think we can just, oh, we couldn't. My bad. Let's just continue on. Now what? I'm going to do a component of that right away. So cut it out our design. Move out, move outside. And if you like cutting something from a component and paste, it will uh, reappear directly into the component. So what you can do is use Command Option V. No, Command Shift V. And then you will uh, get it pasted outside. So we mark it, command option K, command R to rename it, and we call it button. And now we pull an instant of our button inside our talk. The nice thing about this is like, now if I update this, it will update everywhere. So it's just like regular code. Okay, so we needed the button, here's the button. And we got some, we need some text. I know you shouldn't use placeholders as uh, instructions, but let's do it here. Uh, fill in email. Product manager won't mind. Uh, and let's do it cursive and. Yeah, you can shoot, shout, move on now. Move on! <laughs> <laughs> Great. So and now we got only our thank you page left. Let's rename these so we know where we are. Start. Let's mark it. Command R. Uh, single. And let's duplicate single. And remove the things we don't need, which is our header, speaker. No, we don't need anything here. Just need a header. Okay, let's grab a title, command or option drag, and thanks for signing up. The whole intention of like this first part is to let you. Uh, create something that looks crappy that you can use in order to like describe a flow to someone. So if you're like feeling good about this and yeah, I'm done. Uh, there's a great Lego session held by Kalle, but otherwise I'm going to get into the nitty gritty parts. So uh, then you should stay. Okay, please, whoop, please check your email inbox. That's what the cool kids say. Okay, and then according to this, we should have some sort of like call to action to go and see more talks. So we'll just drag a copy of the button and say, back to talks. And you see that it like misaligns a bit here. We can fix this just by like target the text and here's an alignment tool. So we say how it should align if we change the proportions. And now it's back here. That, that's, that's a bit of a uh, topic. Uh, confirmation. Okay. And now it's time for prototyping.
I'm just going to move this little fellow. And up in the right part, here we got like a design mode, and here we got the prototype mode. So we click prototype mode. We're starting to get access to little dots if we double click down to components. So I just drag it here, and it will say like if I on tap or on click or something, it will navigate to single. Same goes for the sign up button here. I will navigate to confirmation. I click on back to talk. I just drag it here. And we're done. So now we're ready to like test our prototype. Hopefully it works. So if I click here, I quickly can see which areas are clickable. I click sign up. Great. Sign up. Okay, nice. It's time to share this with uh, our project manager. So I'm just going to post this in region Stockholm. Figma feedback, please. And anyone like in the audience that would like to add a comment, you can do it easily by just select this little comment blob, comment tool right up here. Perhaps like add, I don't see a starting time. Okay, and then I can like fix that and resolve it. But we start out like with, with uh, the wireframe. So now we're, when we're done with this, we are having like uh, a prototype or a design with names that should be replaced. We've got a splash that's, oh, <laughs> no worries. So. All of these shouldn't be in the final design, but I think we should keep them just in order if we are going to wireframe more stuff. So let's mark all of these. Press Command R, and you get access to the rename feature in Figma. Now we get access to several different names. We're going to go for current name, and we use a dash and write DWF for wireframe, and we rena rename them. And call this page. Here's a page navigation because we're going to create several pages. Wire frame. And we're going to create a new uh, page called components because they must live somewhere. And now we can mark all our components. They shouldn't be here. And we right click and we get access to move to page components. Um, and all of a sudden, they appear here. You can get access to an overview by pressing Shift 1. Or if you select a certain component, Shift 2. You can quickly switch view. OK. So this was like the first prototyping part. I'm going to create one more called Assets. Please work. Well, we're only going to have one asset. And we're going to move our image to asset, because it's not a component. OK, and now it's time to start designing. So we're going to right click on this and duplicate it. We call it design. Oh, I messed up. Uh, start a timer for 30 minutes. I should keep track on time. 30 minutes there. Oh, where is. Okay. I start the timer for nine minutes. Okay. So, we want to like make this look nice as well. So, we start out with the header component. We just go to components. This is my flow. It will work. So we shift drag an instance of this and we command option B for breaking or detaching it. We're going to rename it to just top bar. 
and oh, thank you. Perfect. Um, and we're going to add some color to it as well as a logo because I forgot about adding a logo. Just drag a logo here. That looks perfect. Switch to design mode. Give it some color. And I think we should try to simulate the brand colors, the new brand colors here. So I'm just going to wing it. Tell me if I'm off. Should be a little more greener, right? This is where you'll move along. Uh, okay, so we found some. This isn't really good. It should be a little more. Move on! Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so the fill is like, well, we. It's nice to have the colors, but what we want is swatches that we can reuse and alter later in the design process. So there's a little thing here by the fill called, I don't know, swatches, I guess. And when you click that, you will get a plus sign. And now we can create our own. So we're going to call this primary. And if we want to change the color of this, we can just get access directly to primary. And we've got this like rectangle that represents the bar, but we really don't want to use that because we're going to switch into, into something new called auto layout. And auto layout is like the key of Figma. It's like the best thing ever. It wasn't available like over a year ago when I used Figma for the last time. Uh, but where's my, there's my top bar. But now it's like, so I had to read up on it. So, I remove the rectangle, I can get access to it through the layer panel here. You can see I'm in top bar, going down, rectangle, move away. Then we just select these two, and we use Shift A for auto layout. Okay, so what's the difference now? Well, all of a sudden we have like items that are behaving in a special way. So if we add a new item, it will add it with the same spacing. That's not totally what we're after here, but stay with me. So, use this, and here on the right are the settings for auto layout. You can like select how it's going to align. So either it's horizontally or vertically. So if I just switch here, you can see, and it got a spacing here, but we want them to be on the right and on the left. So we open this little thing and it's called, I don't know what this is called, let's just follow along. Space between. And now it will equally distri distribute all the items here. So if I click this and drag, thank God it worked, uh, it will like scale. And now it will be much easier to design for like iPad and different states. So we would like to have our background though. So we're going to click the frame here, and there's something off about this. You know what? Yeah. So this is like the working area was bigger earlier on, and then I applied an uh, out layout, and now it's like positioned in the working area. And what we can do then is like position the thing that we're interested about and there's a little resize to fit the content. And now all of a sudden, there we are. So we mark our top bar and we are going to add a fill to this. So let's just wing it once more. Yeah, okay, I will talk to the brand manager later, but that's sufficient for now. And we select our little style, add it, call it secondary. Okay. And you see like the uh, menu here is way too high. Uh, and we can fix this like just by pressing the alt layout. And we got some layout options. Now, it's middle aligned, all the things. Okay. You know what? 
this you should never do live coding somebody said I'm just going to grab this remove the layout apply it again and then select the top layer and then add out the layout now and then at the sorry I think it's aligned to the left yeah uh, and where were I? <laughs> Sorry. Um, there we are. Okay. And now we should have some padding on this as well. And there's a setting for this, like right next to the options. Just add some. And you can add this in the same way as CSS. You can say, like, okay, X. 8 pixels top to bottom, and on our side we're going to have 16 pixels, and it just works. Okay, so we got our top bar, and we will move back to the sign, and we just select, you know what, we can even like remove all these, and go to assets. Not what I expected. Oh, I forgot to create a component out of it. So, we select the top bar, command, option K. Now it's a component. Now it's available in our assets menu. And we move to design. Grab it from the assets. There we are. Like, where are we going? Yeah, now move on. Now we will have this pretty much like the same design. Uh, let's grab our conference item. We'll go back to the components. And just create an instance. Command option B to break it. And let's just add the secondary color as fill. There we are. You see what I did there? I like remove the rectangle. I can do that. There we are. And we'll add our primary color. Same goes here, primary. And we'll rename it to just splash. Command option K. And we'll go back to the design and we'll just Use something called uh, we'll just swap it. Can't really see it. Never mind. We'll just go from on the right. Here we got access to all the instances as well. So we'll swap the instance to splash. And we see that it's like it's uh, pretty much the, the same color as the top bar. No surprise there. So perhaps we should create a variation of our color. So we'll jump back to our components. Well, we don't need to, but we can. Uh, I'm just going to drag a few boxes here in order to like illustrate the different colors. Option drag, option drag. And here, we use the primary fill. And we got our secondary fill. And we need something that should be a bit darker that adds some contrast. So I'll just put it closely and we'll use the secondary fill and it's the same. And on your right, there's a little uh, break, uh, broken link icon. So if you click it, we'll detach the, it from the color palette. So now we can edit it, but have the same properties. We just go a little bit darker, a little bit. Okay, and create a new style. We call it secondary slash dark. Okay, and on your right now, you can see if I just click the canvas, you can see like all our color styles. And you can group it, so you can have several variations just by using this namespace technique. So we're going to switch this to
to the dark. Go back to our design. Yeah, looks great. And we might want some sort of like header image as well. So what we're going to do is break the design here again. It's a bit counter counterintuitive, but like that's we'll we'll just iterate on it. So we would like an image, and that's this is like kind of the weird part because like everything is a fill in Figma. Uh, so we add a fill, and out in the left corner here, we got several things we can choose from like different uh, gradients and such, but we'll choose image. Choose an image. And we've got several backgrounds, so that's going to go for this one. We can use like different techniques, use it, use overlaser or something like that, but I'm just going to put it on top because it adds some color. Okay, looking good. It's time to work with the conference items. This is what I fear. Okay, so go to components, drag an instance, and we detach it. If you know the lyrics, sing along. Talk item. And now this is a tricky part because this is like we got several elements that are supposed to like work in the design and uh, stretch and such. So we'll start out with these two, because we think that, or at least I think that uh, the description should be able to expand if we have an editor that's just crazy about writing. So shift A, and we create an auto layout. Now they're grouped together. And we combine this. You see, here's the auto layout. Here's the rectangle. Rectangle. They, they don't need to be put together in order to do this. It's just order to demonstrate. So, and we'll add an outer layer to these two. And they should have a space between as well. So now it works. Kind of. The text doesn't flow though. And we can fix that easily by just click it and set the resizing property. Now it hugs the content, like how big it is. But we should have fill container, but still it doesn't expand. And that's because these small items inside as well need to have fill container. Hey, it's responsive. Great. Okay, so final part is to add the sign up button as well. So we select both of these and Perhaps I should do the button first. Uh, never mind. Just go for it. Uh, okay, and we'll need to enhance this a bit. So what you can do, like, in order to, to shift the uh, weight of the font, is the same technique as we used earlier in order to uh, increase and decrease the font size with uh, command shift dot or command shift comma. We can use command option uh, dot in order to, to toggle and uh, increase and decrease it. So we have the talk title and this one should fill the container. Okay. And it's using an instance of that. Okay. So let's jump back to our design. Yes, select these few frames. You know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll select them and replace them with our, sorry, forgot to create a component out of this. Command, option, K. Now it's a component. And it looks kind of weird. There we are. Now it looks perfect. Okay, back to our design. Replace these talk item without VF. And these work a little better. And while we have all of these selected, we're going to apply auto layout on these as well. So Shift A. And 
Now we can add some padding to this. 16 pixels and uh, we can also like increase the spacing between them so you get the full control and we need to as you can see they don't really they're not really responsive yet so we click the items and fill container damn it no stress <laughs> Yeah, just the worst player ever. Um, let me get back to my. So this is like if I'm not really sure what what's happening, I usually just move the component to the implementation. So we just move it to the page design, and we can fiddle around with it there. So I have the design, and our item is here. So we'll try to figure out like what's happening here. So this got the fix with, shouldn't be, fill container. Fill container, looks good. Fill container. Why is that? Spacing here. Please bear with me. Um, okay. The content. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to debug this. Well, I got a few minutes remaining. I think 12 minutes, a lot of time. Uh, we'll create an instance and we're going to try to make this flow. So, fill container. Hey, I know what's wrong. It's like it doesn't have an auto layout on the top. So, the same issue as we had earlier. So, I'm just going to select these, Command X, just cut them. Remove our weirded out auto layout, paste them in, select the component, apply the lay auto layout, and fill container. Ah, great. And this one as well. So now you can see that it works like on bigger screen as well. So when we're done with this, we're just going to move it back to the components layer. Okay, so still we haven't really fixed the buttons, but we're going to do that uh, now. Um, yeah, that's our talk item. Button. Okay, and yeah, drag the duplicate. Command option B, break. I'm going to apply. No, yeah, this is the thing about buttons. We shouldn't have rectangles here as well. So we just select our sign up here and we'll apply out layout. Ooh, that's bad. Sorry. Shouldn't shift the keyboard in the middle of the lecture. Shift A, we apply out layout. We select a fill color that's secondary. And we use the primary as color here. Now, why would we do this? Well, it's like, as you know, not all buttons are fixed width in a design. So you want something that can expand. Uh, and you want to have some sort of like padding around it. So if we create. Oh, look at that. It happened again. Sorry. That's going to apply the auto layout on the correct layer. There we are. Primary. Looking good. Doesn't really does do what I want to. No. 
we are going to do the set sign there. Uh, apply the secondary color. Let's just add some padding to it. So eight in the top, 16 on the sides. That's a bit short. Let's do 12 on the top, 24 on the side. Yeah, yeah a lot better. We can just remove this. And we got our the component. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I should like mark the component and then go to our positioning here. And now it looks good again. So I just renamed this Command R to Button. And this one, we can select components within components and then replace them. So we got our Command Option K, Component. And now we can replace it with the button. And if we have a look at our design, it's starting to look a lot better. So we should have some like images on this as well. And one neat feature with Figma is that you can like collect a, a set of images. So you do that with Option Shift K, and then you will be prompted with uh, your file explorer. So we'll select three images. And we're going to have them available here. So I just click, click, click. Hey, looks neat. Okay. Uh, how far into it are we? So uh, let's do the speaker because that's fun as well. So we go back to the speaker component, drag an instance, break, make it a bit. Fitter, thicker, ever, and uh, that, that looks okay. So we apply auto layout to this, or is it auto layout already? No, it's not. We select the text layers because if there's a really long name, we want it to like flow downwards. So uh, Shift A, auto layout, and we combine it with the image Shift A. So now we got a, uh, hopefully, it's going to expand downward. Hold up. So if we got, with a very long name. Okay. And now we want this to have, yeah, let's just, just let it just hug the content for now. So we're going to go back to our design, replace it, no, hold up, let's create, a, rename it to speaker, command option K, create a component, go back to design, And we're going to have, there used to be a swap instance here, but ah, never mind. Let's do it here. Speaker. Okay. With a very long name. And we can see that it like, creates a, a bit of issue because it will like run out in the margin. Uh, so what we'll do is like we'll move our component for debugging back to the working area. So back to design, it's somewhere, there it is, okay, and we'll try to figure out like what's wrong. I usually like try to, to mess up my own design <laughs> as much, much as possible. I call it like fuck up early uh, method uh, and that's just so we won't run into like issues later on. Well, so if we have this, it shouldn't be more than this. Like that, something like that. And we should 
take this, it should fill the container, and this one should hug content, no? Yeah, fill the container, there we are. So now it flows downwards, like when it's too big. Um, and just to make sure, yeah, this one. So I select the component once again, and then I resize it to fit. That's quite important. Okay, so let's mock uh, an image. This person, uh, we'll do. Well, let's use a plugin. So we'll double click this and Command P for the fussy search. Then there's a plugin called Unsplash, which will uh, connect you to Unsplash. And here we got like access to a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm going for portrait, take someone that looks serious. There we are. Um, okay, how much time remains? Sorry. <laughs> In total? Yeah, wow, we'll make this work. Um, okay, so we got this, and we got a half the sign. We're going to replace this with regular button looks good and our field we should probably create some sort of uh, component for this as well select it create a component rename it it's field and um, Get rid of the rectangle, select this text, we'll do the outer layout exercise once again, and we'll spread it, and we can add strokes to it. And in order to make it look good, we have to increase the padding a tiny bit. Yeah, 16 pixels are way too big. Let's do 8 by 8 by 16. That was 12 by 16. Yeah, that looks okay. And we'll crop it there. See where I'm going wrong with this? I'm having a component inside my design. You should never have that. Move it out, drag it in, expand it, and Yeah, so you see, I've done this again. This is like a common culprit, <laughs> if you will. You need to add it and select the component. Perhaps you should just select the component and start. Then add outer layout, add our fill, which is white. Um, perhaps we should go crazy and have a stroke that's the secondary color as well. And increase size of it. There we are. It works perfectly. We add layout to the center. Yeah. And thanks for showing up, Mr. Field. And we'll move it up to components. So I don't know how much longer. Should I go on or do you have, want to ask questions or? Yeah, go ahead. Within the frame. Oh, within the design. Right. Well, usually it's like you forget about where the component is. So you're like, oh, where is it? Or you like start messing around with a certain field and then you break the whole design. So like that's that's the thing about like clean up all the time. Um, I think 
I've given you a little intro to this. We could do like the same exercise with a prototype, but uh, I should just go with the slides and, and try to sum this up. Um, somewhere? Okay. So, like a few words on the way. Auto layout, pretty much everything. If you think like, hmm, perhaps I should use auto layout on this component, it's probably too late. So like use it before everything. And move your components out of your design ASAP. And we didn't get to variants, uh, but they're like kind of tricky so you can toggle a different feature on it if you should hide an element or show an element. And don't be afraid to make a mess, but you do need to clean it up. So like this is the workflow. You see that I'm juggling forward and backward through different screens. And uh, that's just the way to illustrate how it should be tidy. Most of the time I got a, like, a whole set of components and then move it when I'm done. Uh, some power commands. Shift drag. No, oh, it should be alt drag. Option drag. My bad. Uh, but that's like copy and create an instance. Command alt K is create component, which is like you do all the time. Super useful. Command Alt B, detach instance or break. Shift A is the auto layout, which you should use like all the time. And Command R for renaming components that I'm trying to click it. And some neat plugins for this is the Unsplash plugin just to get images and placeholders. The lorem ipsum is kind of nice because you don't have to shift context. And uh, breakpoints, which I didn't cover here, but it, it allows you to connect different canvases with each other. And you can say like, in this breakpoint, show this. In this other, show this. So that's a really neat thing to look up. And uh, parting three, two, one. Thank you for listening. <laughs>